case, it's a case uh, between uh, Vincent and Carrefour. Sustainability chain, uh, supply chains, excuse me. How Carrefour used uh, blockchain to implement and uh, a track and trace of their meat supply chain. I uh, am very uh, proud to announce uh, Jonas van Hoven, member of uh, the group Kiwa. He will give his presentation right now. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. <clears throat> Building a new traceability standard in the meat industry, very similar to what you just have seen from IBM Beth. Um, and I'm going to just walk you through it a little bit of what Vansot is all about, just setting the scene. Then I will give you a, a little bit of an introduction of how we, from out the tech sector, so the testing, inspection, and certification industry, are doing with blockchain and that I will illustrate then as well of course with the use case in the meat industry specifically here in Belgium. Um, in Belgium the meat industry is a, is, is a very sensitive one. We had the dioxin crisis uh, some decades ago and a couple of fraud cases here and there. So traceability in the meat industry is something that everyone in fact gets a value out of. Van Sot, part of Kiwa now, what are we all about? We are a market leader here in the Benelux. We employ around 2,000 um, individuals. And we focus on four main pillars. Those pillars, safety first, is all about what every company has to comply to, the legal standards. Anybody who has electrical installations, pressure vehicles, etc., that needs to be inspected to ensure the safety of the usage of these assets. Efficiency is all linked to supra-legal norms and standards, such as the ISO standards, right, which are accepted across industries. The third one is quality, and that is then, of course, also linked to what we did with Carrefour. Quality is something where our clients, in fact, try to differentiate themselves by setting out quality standards, and that has to be, of course, verified by independent parties such as Van Sot. And lastly, and nowadays more and more important, sustainability uh, is something that we also are investing a lot on to assure a safe and efficient environment. Now, Van Sot is a traditional engineering company. Eh? set up in 1872, almost 150 years old, basically. So you might ask yourself the question, why the hell would we deal with these type of new technologies? Uh, business is going well, the industry is growing organically every year. Why would we try to do anything and perhaps even burn our hands? But as many of you, uh, we are in a sector that is highly under pressure and specifically the tech sector is a low-tech industry which is characterized by commodization and such and a lot of price pressure. And therefore, to avoid that uh, we become, in fact, uh, smaller and smaller, we have to continuously reinvent ourselves. And blockchain is a part of that experimentation. What do we do in the tech sector with uh, blockchain as such? I show you a little bit of different articles, specifically in the, let's say, food industry, but also around certificates that are fraud. And what I wanted to show here is that in each of these elements, a tech player, an independent party like Vansot is involved by either auditing each of the players in the supply chain or even testing the final product as such. And because of that, there are many players out there, competitors, Bureau Veritas, they have their own origin solution to assure traceability, SGS with Transparency One all over the globe. DNV even has their certificates on blockchain, uh, but on a privatized one, so they can only make the transactions. 
And very interestingly, TÜV Rheinland is even certifying personnel experts that are working on blockchain, developers, consultants, etc. So the business cases are there somehow, but we do have to be very honest here as well. As you've heard with Abi Imbev uh, as well, it's a lot about experimentation and use cases. At this point in time, I don't see and we don't see in the tech sector and probably also other industry, very much killer applications out there that can easily scale and be used by many parties. And I will dive into that a little bit later with the use case of Carrefour. So blockchain technology, a couple of years ago, uh, it did sort of send a wave throughout our higher management. Uh, what is it all about? It sounds sexy, but what do we do with it? There's a lot of fraud out there, not only on certificates, people trying to copy them. Um, so perhaps blockchain can help us in that. And most importantly, there was more and more a storyline being developed. Blockchain equals decentralized world equals remove intermediaries. And that is, of course, for a part party like Vensot, quite of a risky discussion because we are one of those intermediaries that are present at every step of the way in a value or supply chain. I always show this, uh, this, this funny example of how these discussions go uh, in higher management, uh, but also middle management and the colleagues on the floor, uh, that nobody really had a clue what blockchain is. And to this day, many people still don't do. So that was something we really, from out our innovation and customer experience excellence team, we really started to focus on and see uh, try to find those answers with technological star players like Settlement, Isopta Twintech and others, we were able to do so. We were able to do so because at the time, very conveniently, Carrefour, one of our main clients back then, came to Vensot with a challenge. The director general of Carrefour Belgium knocked on our doors and said to us, please create a new standard in the food industry, create a traceability standard, and of course, put it on blockchain because that's good for marketing. And a little bit on the side, be a bit quick about it because we want a, a little bit of a, a detail there, a funny detail. Carrefour wanted to also stuff it a little bit to Corret, another big retailer here in Belgium, to say we are the first. Carrefour France, failed in 2018 to launch this particular solution, a blockchain traceability solution from France into Belgium. And that is why Belgium Carrefour, the entity itself, came to Vensot to ask what we could do together with them. There's always a little bit of competition, of course, between the countries. Uh, a little side detail there as well. The reason why they didn't really succeeded in launching their France solution was just because of language issues. They didn't or weren't able directly to have the Dutch language integrated in their application. In any sense, whenever we talk about this particular challenge, I also want to give you a little bit of a view of what challenges we had internally, the type of discussions, not only about what the technology can do or what it is all about, but also the sensitivities around it. As I mentioned, blockchain as a game changer to remove intermediaries. So there was fear. There was fear in our ranks that we might become obsolete. On top of that, Carrefour basically asked us to prove our position to them. Why would Carrefour or any retailer still work with an independent party such as Vansot, if you can put everything on a blockchain, decentralized with immutable records. Why would you need somebody to verify that particular data? So again, we had to, one, eh, try to use that fear, find a solution, but also educate Carrefour and prove ourselves 
in terms of our value in that particular uh, business. Vansot was and is quite successful, so therefore, even though there was fear, why would we try to disrupt ourselves? Business was going well uh, by squeezing the margins, driving the costs down, so why would we try to create something new which might implode our costs? And we are an engineering company, not at all an IT company. So the challenge, therefore, was not so much creating the solution, but it was way bigger. We had to reinvent ourselves, reposition ourselves, prove ourselves within the overall market. As I mentioned, there was a lot of internal resistance, right? Not only in our own company, but also at Carrefour France. Of course, uh, they said, why, why don't you help us to improve the current so solution that they have in Paris? and launch that. We had questions arising in our ranks. Why would we, Van Sot, just give away our data? As everybody says, right? The value is in its data. So why would we even start doing this? However, with all this skepticism around it, and besides the fact that with settlement and other technological players out there, we were able to have speed and work in an agile way to deliver the only reason or the one of the most important elements that helped us to overcome this resistance, this politics and all these questions and put them aside was because of the buzz around blockchain, this trend, this noise around it. It's what we call a bubble. This bubble around blockchain basically created an over enthusiasm for at all parties. And therefore those parties were committing themselves without even doing a traditional cost-benefit analysis. Can you imagine? At the time, nobody was asking about how much does it cost. Let's do this. And I always put this quote from Matt Levine and Bloomberg about this social coordination problem. Because whenever we knock on the doors to say, hey, let's do something, eh? let's share data in the supply chain because it's for transparency, not many people want to deal with it especially in the meat industry, very low margins. Why would they need to put their time and investments towards that? However, when you invite them, let's do a blockchain meeting, then it makes more sense. And this was particularly important with all the partners out there. As you've seen with Abi Imbev and the supply chain for the Leffe, there are many farmers out there, many slaughterhouses, and many of those players still work on paper, have their own personal ledger, where they monitor the transactions. So all of those elements are, of course, also challenges to grab that data and make it actionable. Before I get into, let's say, how you could scale further particular uh, solutions like this, and I'm always, uh, is that we were able to, in fact, create a single data platform that, let's say, increased visibility, of course, like with the AB InBev case, you could see where it comes from, from which farmer, which slaughterhouse has killed the, the beast, let's say, and cut it into pieces so we can have a good steak at home. Right. However, the most important thing, gentlemen and ladies, is not just visibility, and also the marketing around it to increase trust for our customers, it's also about accountability. Whenever things go sideways, it was very easy to return it to the data and find out where it went wrong. And that, of course, from our perspective, going for a safe and efficient environment was very crucial. And this particular blockchain solution helped us do, that, do this. Back in time, you have a very simple example from Walmart and finding the origin of a mango. It took them six days from higher leadership to find out where a mango came from. Whenever you have such data platforms out there, it is done in a few minutes and not in days, which can also, in the end, potentially save lives. However, it's one thing 
And uh, I could see as well with the IBM Bev, there are many things. The, the, the sky is the limit. You could do so many things in creating a traceability solution using that data. But it's one thing to have a technological solution for a specific use case. It's another thing to creating a viable business case around it. Because that was number one question from our CEO. He said, sounds like a lot of fun, Jonas, but how are you going to make money out of it? How do you make it sustainable, not just for Carrefour, but for all other clients? Very important elements are the cost to join the network, which of course depends on the overall architectural setup. We had a lot of discussions about it because our architecture is set up with major players, Carrefour, and we start inviting ecosystem participants on it. However, we didn't do that with everybody. We didn't invite it, all the farmers. We didn't invite all the players because it doesn't make sense cost-wise. If you try to give them everybody a tool to put in their data, whether it's automized or even a person copy-pasting it into a tool, it doesn't make sense in the overall business case. So you had to minimize the data players out there. You have to go for those data aggregators to make a solution like this very sustainable. And of course, that has an impact on the architecture. You have different layers, decentralized and centralized architectural uh, elements in there. And we have many discussions with blockchain because eh, it sounds contradictory. Blockchain, decentralized, everything has to be decentralized. It doesn't make sense, according to us, cost-wise and looking at all the efficiencies. I'll give you a very simple example. We are using at this point also another blockchain solution from another client. We have one person, an FTA, working every day, one hour, a half, two hours in copy-pasting data into the tool. Can you imagine? It's of course all for the good of the business, traceability, transparency, but that data is already stored somewhere else. So we're just basically copy-pasting it. Brings me to the <coughs> second point that we always have to bear in mind the efficiency gains and avoid to duplicate existing data streams out there. And finally, <coughs> excuse me, nowadays, you have to acknowledge it. Blockchain is new, yes, but it's very easy to start integrating it in any data solution. We did it in a weekend, over the weekend. Of course, we had the help of players like Settlement to do so in a very quick manner. If we wanted to do it ourselves, it would take us half a year or even more than a year to do so. But nowadays, there are solutions that you can take off the shelf and integrate it into whatever you're trying to accomplish. And therefore, for any sense, whenever you want to scale a business, uh, let's say, a traceability solution, especially in the food sector, it's really more about understanding, let's say, the ins and outs and the complexities of the supply chain itself and not anymore about the infrastructure, the specific technology around blockchain. Those are little discussions on the sideline. Leave it over to the experts. It's very much to do about the complexity of the supply chain, which is directly linked to my last point, garbage in, garbage out. That is our value from our advanced thoughts. You can still make a data platform. Everybody puts in that data and it is immutable. Very nice, very nice. It's immutable, tamper-proof. However, this data is still linked to the garbage in, garbage out principle. One must verify it and triangulate it, what is happening in real life. And that is where we, as an independent company, let's say, right, that's where we come in to verify that data. I close off with the aspect that we from our advanced Sota Kiwa, we are continuously experimenting with it. We have the use case with Carrefour, and we are still looking out for new cases, let's say, 
to make it happen, to make and assure that we are still at the forefront of everything, because that's important for us as a company to try to disrupt ourselves and ensure that we create a sustainable business also in the future. I want to thank, Set thank Settlement and TwinTech for helping us back in the days and over the years, and I hope we can continue that collaboration moving forward. Thank you.